want to say welcome to those that are online. Welcome to our service here in Wilton, Maine today. This weather outside is frightening. <laughs> Snow and ice. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord anyways, right? Amen. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here. Because this is where Jesus has shown up today. And he's going to do something spectacular in our midst today. I believe he's going to touch someone. I believe he's going to bring healing to somebody. I believe he's going to bring deliverance to somebody. I believe he's going to bring revelation to somebody. What do you need from the Lord today? This is what Jesus spoke to me right before the service. There cannot be a visitation without an expectation. What did you expect when you walked into the house today? Do you expect to be touched by the Lord? Or are you expecting to go through a service like you did last week and the week before that? What are you here for? He also said a few weeks ago, he said it's not in the physicality, but it's in the spirituality. It doesn't matter how strong you are, because some of the weakest physical people are the strongest where it really counts. When they get on their knees and they pray. I want to be a man of prayer. I want to pray. I want to seek the Lord every day of my life, and I want to be reading the Word every day. Amen. And he also told me when I was worshiping that there's somebody in here today that has been going through a, a storm. It's been very dark for you, and you doubted if you would ever get through it. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus told me your storm is over. Your storm is over. Amen. The light is about to shine brighter than it has ever shined before. And your life's about to change. And your circumstances are about to change. Because you've been faithful. And God understands and recognizes that. And I don't know who you are. But God knows exactly who you are. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you, we could. Uh, that wasn't even part of the sermon. That was extra stuff. Uh, we're going to open up to the book of Ezekiel to start with in uh, 37, chapter 37, beginning with verse 1. And uh, the message today is called, Can These Bones Live? Good question, right? Can these bones live? Uh, in verse 1, read along with me here if you'd like to. Uh, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Verse 2, it caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very, very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, Thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. Preach to these bones, these dry bones. Preach to the bones. And say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. Mm. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9, then uh, said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, talk to the wind, preach to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain 
that they may live. Verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and, he, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet in exceeding great army. Sister Park, will you pray for us? Jesus' name, amen. Boy, are you, are you ready? I don't know if you're all ready for this. Y'all look very comfortable in your chairs. You might just want to put on a seatbelt or something like that because I don't know if you're going to be able to hold on here in a few minutes. God's getting ready to bust out in this place. He's going to do something spectacular like he's never done before inside of this place, and you're going to wonder, wow, I've never felt anything like this before. Hallelujah. Verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. This was probably a battlefield. Can you, can you imagine the dead were slain inside of this battlefield and where they dead, where they died is right where they laid. They died right there. And there was many bones, the Bible says. There was bones everywhere. Because these, this had been the site of a great battle. And we can look outside our window and we can tell we are all in a great battle today. Aren't we in the fight of our life trying to live here in the 21st century? Trying to live as a Christian? Trying to do the things that are good and pure and righteous and holy? And all around us is people who are dying and who are dead and who are slain. But God's saying, I got plans for you. Amen. So these were dead, slain bodies of warriors who have long since been forgotten. Who knows, Brother Joe, how long they were there? Only God knows how long those bones laid there in that place. They were probably at one time like me, very strong. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe they were like Brother Joe. <laughs> Amen. But they were warriors. They were strong. They were powerful. But when you're dead, you're dead. Don't matter how strong you are. Don't matter how big you are. You see, God, God one thing we've learned, Sister Parker, is that God, the Lord, can take the biggest, baddest person you could even think of and break them. Break them. Until they crumble. That's what exactly what he did to me in 2002. I crumbled under the power of God. As I was an alcohol drinking, partying like a crazy fool. <laughs> God said, I'm going to take everything away from you. I'm going to strip you naked. And I'm going to break you so bad that the only thing you can do is call on my name. That's the only thing I could do. The only thing I could do was look up. God, everything's gone. Everything I had is gone. And he said, that's exactly how it had to be, son. I had to break you so that I could build you. If God's breaking you today, it's a good thing. It's a good thing if you're broken before the Lord. Because if, he, if you don't break before the Lord, God will break you. That's word right there. That's the word of God. Amen. But these bones were scattered, and they were broken and abused. Verse 2, it caused me to pass by them round about. Behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry, white, bleached, brittle. Even the worms wouldn't inhabit these bones. And sometimes, I'm going to get it real right now with you, if you don't mind. I like to be a little transparent sometimes. Sometimes when I walk into this church, I feel dry. I feel like we could do better. I feel like we could worship harder. 
I think we could do better. I, I don't think we've even, even touched the tip of the potential that lies in this church right now. But it's only going to come forward if we allow the Lord to work in our life and submit ourselves to the Lord and resist the devil. That's the only way it's going to come forward, that potential that you have, that power that you possess. God wants to use it for the end times. He wants to use it for his kingdom. But you got to yield to him. you got to yield to him, and you got to die to yourself. That's the hard part. <laughs> That's the hard part. Why? Because it's flesh. Come on, right? This flesh is at war with God. It's at war with God. Because why? Because it's the, the eyes. The eyes. It's the touch, the feel. It's the taste. We want what tastes good. We want what looks good. And we want something that makes us feel good. And so that's what the problem is. We've got to allow God to work inside of us and break us. So here is the life that is without God. Here is a life that is wasted. Here is the life that has no hope. Drugs have left it abandoned, alone, and uninhibited. Alcohol has broken it into pieces. The improper relationship has caused it to be without hope. Sin has destroyed it. Hopelessness is all around it. Despair surrounds it. Unhappiness overwhelms it. Dejected by its former self. Depressed by its current condition. Discouraged by its failures. Disheartened, disappointed, destitute. It never has, it has no hope. It has no hope. The dry bones, it has no hope. The broken, the dead, of ever returning it to its previous glory. When I think about this, I think about the people who have already passed away. There's no hope for them. They're in heaven or they're in hell. They've already gone up or they've already gone down. There's no hope. But we have hope. Look to your neighbor. There's not too many of them. But look to your neighbor <laughs> and say, you've got hope. You've got hope. Mm -hmm. So they're abandoned. These bones are abandoned. You've got hope. <laughs> they're abandoned. Even the man of God would not have not known where they were if God himself would not have showed him where these bones were. Think about that. How did he know where the bones were? God showed him. <laughs> when we start having, well, dare I say it, revival, God's going to show us where to go. We're not going to guess where the good fishing holes are, brother, brother Jimmy. God's going to tell us where to go. He's going to say, hey, Jimmy. Yeah, you, Jimmy. I want you to go down the road and talk to the man. He's going to come to the Lord today. He's going to he's going to be touched by the spirit of God that dwells inside of you. Amen. And uh, so we're not going to have to guess about these things. And that's what we know that God showed this man of God exactly where these bones were. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Can this church continue to strive? Can it continue to grow? Will it really experience revival? Can we really do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? And I answered, oh, Lord, God, thou knowest. Can these bones live? Even the preacher. Even the preacher, when he looked upon these bones, he had no hope for these slain. He said, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Only you know, Jesus, whether or not this town of Wilton can actually experience revival. I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, I don't think so. You know, but God knows. God already has preordained it. God has already put us in the place to experience it. If they were to live, he realized that it was going to take a real move of God. 
if this church is going to experience revival, if we're really going to come alive in the spirit, it's going to take a move of God. It's not going to be a move of Jim Parker over here, Brother Parker. It ain't going to be my move. <laughs> nope, not Brother Richie. It ain't going to be your move. <laughs> it's not going to be Brother Garrett on the back's move. Nope, it's going to be a move of God. God's going to move us. God's going to move us. God's going to move us. Amen. It's going to take a real move. And it's a wise man. Say a wise man. Who realizes that he needs God. When you come to the conclusion, you're halfway home. When you can come to that conclusion. Psalm 27 reminds us some trust in chariots. Some in but we will remember the name of the Lord, amen, our God. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Stop listening to these other voices that are around you. Hear the word of God. Hear the word of Jesus. Stop listening to the person who works with you. Who's telling you to go out after, after work and smoke a joint and drink a beer with me? Stop listening to your flesh. Push away the things that you need to push away. <laughs> Stop listening to these voices of the world. Stop listening to the voices of your flesh. And definitely do not listen to the voice of the enemy. But tune in, right? Tune in like a fine tune. Tie, tune into the to Jesus. And how can you tune into Jesus? Well, you got to have your antennas up. <laughs> you got to have your antennas up. <laughs> I don't see too many antennas up here today. Can you lift up your antennas unto the Lord? That's how we tune into Jesus. You got to tune in with your, your antennas. When we lift up our hands in the sanctuary, we bless the Lord. When we put up our hands, we are putting up our antennas and saying, yes, God. Yes, God, I will listen to you. I will submit to you. I will resist the devil. I will resist my flesh. I will resist the world. And I'll be strong. And I'll make good choices. And I'll make good decisions in the kingdom of God. We need to get into a place where we can hear his word. You know, some people say some people. Some people can't make it a day without a drink. Some can't make it one hour without a cigarette. What makes us think we can go one day without, the God, without God? Whether it be the rhema or the logos, what makes us think we can live without God? And, and, of course, we're saying, yeah, we can't live without God, but we do it every day sometimes, right? We, we get up in the morning and we say, praise the Lord, I, I love you, Jesus. We pat the dog and we go on our way, and that's it. That's it? Really? That, that, that's it? <laughs> Can you imagine if that's all I did with, with, my re, my, with my relationship with my wife? If I woke up in the morning and said, hi, honey, good to see you. Bye. <laughs> How long would our relationship last? Not very long. <laughs> and God's saying, please talk to me. Please, I want to converse. I want to have a relationship with you. Hear the voice of God through the anointed man of God speaking to you. I love you. I want to have a relationship with you. I, I, I long to spend time with you. I want to be that person that you wake up to and you say good morning, and I want you to say good night to me. I want to have this special bond with you because I love you. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12 says this. Says this for the word is quick and powerful, like my brother Garrett back there. Quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, in the and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God, the logos, the rhema. We've got to hear the. We've got to hear the word of God. Uh, verse 5, thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Amen. Only God can truly deliver us. 
only, <laughs> hear me now, <laughs> only God can deliver you. I know this to be sure, uh, surely a fact. He said, I will cause. When you give your heart over to the Lord, he goes to work on you, and he gets it done. He gets it done. Remember now, hey, listen, Jesus don't get tired, all right? He's very patient, <laughs> and he's very gentle, and he's very kind, and he doesn't get tired. He'll keep working on you and working on you and working on you and working on you until you think, well, is he still working? Yep, I'm still working on you. Thank God he never gives up. Thank God he's closer than a brother. Thank God he's never quit on me. Amen. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine if he was like us? Hey, I'm talking to you, Jeff. <laughs> brother Jeff, I'm, what, you're not listening? Oh, forget it. I don't, I'll go talk to Joe. Can you imagine if he was like that? We'd all be like, we'd be dust. We'd be like, uh, we'd be like fried bacon. You know what I mean? And, uh, but God is, God loves us. Amen. So when you give your heart to the Lord, he goes to work. You couldn't work hard enough to get that raise, but all of a sudden God blesses you financially. You couldn't love enough to keep your marriage. <laughs> this one tears up my string every time, my heart string. You couldn't love enough to keep your marriage, but all of a sudden, God is melting your hearts together. What a beautiful thing God can do in a marriage. What a beautiful thing he can do when you submit to him and you allow God to work inside of you. You couldn't believe enough to be healed, and then all of a sudden, he heals you. He heals you. Sister Genevieve, my goodness. Geneva. Yeah, I was close. I am 59 now. <laughs> I look at you and I say, my goodness. I know what you've been through this year. I know what you've been through. But no one knows it better than you and Jesus, what you've been through, and your husband, of course, right? When I see that, I say, that's resiliency. That's power. That's a healing balm of Jesus Christ touching you and allowing you to get to church. It, you know, when I think about people, oh, the snow is outside. I think I'm going to stay home today. Well, here's, a, here's a lady who's been through uh, broken hips, elderly, and she found, she found her way to the house of God today. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's Let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. You couldn't lie, you couldn't live good enough to save yourself and God died on a cross. Jesus died on that tree to save you. Amen. He said he would do it. He said he would save you. He said he would heal you. He said he would deliver you. He said he would help you. It's when we forsake our own abilities and seek God's help. Seek ye the first the kingdom of God. Amen. Romans 12 and 1, 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed formed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Verse 6, and I will lay a sinews upon you, I'll bring a flesh upon you and cover you with skin and your breath in you and ye shall live and you'll know that I am the Lord. This is the reason God has brought us to this place in life, that he, that we might know him. That's why you're here today, because you want to get closer to Jesus so that you might know him. The reason he allowed us to make such a mess of our life is so that he could show us who he is. Take a moment to, to chew on that for a moment, because I don't know about you, but I've been through a lot. 
And I'm thinking, where is God? Why does God allow things like this to happen? What did I do that was so bad that allowed all these hurts to come into my life and all this pain and misery? What did I do wrong? The reason is so that he could show us who he is. So he could show you that he loves you. So he could show you how much mercy he has for you. And that he could touch you, but not only that, he could touch the people that you love. Your children, your grandchildren, your family, your friends, your church. Everyone that you love can be touched by God because you know him. <laughs> because you know him. You can be touched by God and your family can be touched of the Lord. And he is capable of a show of mercy and grace and a desire to love and to be loved. Ezekiel 37, 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I say, I prophesied. There was a noise. <laughs> I like this part of the sermon. Uh, this part of the, uh, the sermon. This is, a good, this is a good part right here. There you go. I like this one. Uh, I, I prophesied there was a noise. Behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Listen, you want to know how revival is going to come? It's going to become when, when we get shook it up a little bit. <laughs> when God began to, to move inside of us. When you feel shaken, that's when you know God's up to something. When you feel shaken, that's when you know God's moving in your life. Well, that shaking's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because if everything stays the same, then everything stays the same. But if God begins to move and shake and move things around, guess what? Things are going to change around here. <laughs> things are going to change in your life, Brother Jeff, because God's shaking you up. He's moving inside of you. He's touching you. When God begins to put a life back together, there is a noise. Hallelujah. There's a noise. It might take some shaking up. It might take some finding yourself when you get to the end or at the bottom of a pit. When you hit rock bottom, the only way to look is up. And I think about shake. I think about, well, my first thought goes to Elvis, but I can't go there. <laughs> but my second one goes to, just kidding, that was a joke. My second one goes to uh, Paul, the apostle Paul. When that snake took a hold of his arm and bit him. That poisonous snake. He's like, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Shook that snake right, like I did that, got all animated and everything. Yeah. He shook that snake right into the fire. And then the story goes that all the people were like, when's he going to die, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. I got some popcorn, though. <laughs> when you think he's going to drop dead, Joe? <laughs> I don't know. I'm waiting for it, though. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Yep, can you pass the popcorn? Yeah, okay, we're waiting for it. Uh, wait a minute. This dude's not dying. What's going on around here? You know, he didn't die. And they said, oh, my. This man, Paul, he's God. And they tried to worship him. They tried to, they tried to honor him. They tried to, 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 to give homage to Paul. And Paul's like, hey, 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 hey. Hey, not me. Don't be paying homage to me. Don't try to worship me, boys. You're going to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the one. He's the one. He's the one. I tell you what, uh, you're going to get real quiet here now. But I'll tell you what the problem is. Some of us started doing that to us. We'd be like, yes. Take that chair over here, and um, you over there. You get the bomb bombs, and you get the uh, the uh, what do you call that thing? The leaf, the fan. I'm gonna sit back here. Yep, keep paying homage to me. Yeah, that's right. Keep giving me those bomb bombs and get that fan going because I'm that good. Yeah, yeah. That's a problem with the world today. That's a problem with Americans. I just hit something in the spirit. That ain't in my notes. This is free stuff right here. We, we're prideful. Whoa. I think Jesus agrees with me. <laughs> Jesus said, I, amen, amen. 
<laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The United States, we're prideful. We're arrogant people because we got so much. We don't need God. I talk to people every day. I'm a clinician, and one of the things I do is I talk to them about spiritual things, spirituality, if you will. And do you believe in a higher power? They use that verbiage inside the, you know, the business. But I can't say Jesus thing. Higher power, right? Most people don't even believe in a higher power. Never mind the fact that uh, Jesus Christ is the is is God. They don't even believe any any God. And, and why? Because they don't need a God. They don't need God. What do we got? We we've got a lot of work to do here, folks. Try to convince convince the people that don't think they need God that they need God is going to have to take a uh, it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle. But here's what I here's the good part about that. God's in the miracle business. <laughs> yeah. He's in the miracle business. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. He's like, yeah, I could do that. He, he used in the first century, he used a bunch of guys uh, from Galilee, I think it was. And, uh, like fishermen, the Bible says. Unlearned people. Well, <laughs> Last time I checked, we weren't too bright ourselves. <laughs> so God can use this church. That's what I'm trying to get to, right? He can use this people to turn this town, this state upside down, just like in the first century. Miracles, signs, and wonders follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Then you have the miracles. You have the signs. You have the wonders. God has given you the power. And now we just have to put it to good use. We have to get out there and say, you're crippled? I'll pray for you. God can touch you. God can heal you. Bam. You never know what God's going to do. You never. Oh, oh, sorry. I got a little, ca I got a little carried away there. <laughs> I get carried away sometimes. But anyways, you never know what God's going to do, who he's going to touch, who he's going to heal. But we have to make ourselves accessible to him so that he can, allow, he can use us. So, again, Paul shook off the, 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 the stake in, in the island of Malta in Acts 28 and 5. Verse 8, and I'm, I'm getting to the end here. I know this is getting long, but you know what? This is good stuff. You're going to like it. And when I beheld, lo, the sin used that the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. This is going to get good, too. Hold on your seats now. You hold it on. Hold on. It's going to get good here. Ooh. Jeff, you okay, Brother Jeff? You all right? Okay. All right. They looked like soldiers, but they weren't soldiers. They looked like Christians, but in reality, they were just dried up bones covered in flesh. They weren't like the other soldiers. Bones covered in flesh, no life. No breath of God, no Holy Spirit, no Holy Ghost, no power, no anointing. You know something? Jesus said that you would receive power. I just said that. I'm, re I'm reiterating now. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts 1 and 8. There it is right there. If you're having a power outage, you need to call on Jesus. If things ain't happening in your life, you need to pick up the Bible. If your things ain't going good in your life, you need to call upon the one who can help you. You know, don't spend your time trying to be the smartest person in the world. Just call on Jesus Christ, and God's going to touch you. God's going to heal you. God's going to deliver you. God's going to do something in your life that you never expected. But because you made yourself available to him, he will use you to do something spectacular for the kingdom of God. Then said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. You ever talked to the wind before? Maybe it's time to start. <laughs> hey, wind, I'm prophesying to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, son of man, say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds and breathe upon these slain that they may live. When revival, say when revival. When revival comes into your life, it will come from all directions. It's, it's not going to come from one direction. It's not going to be because Brother Jeff's the smartest guy in the world, that's for sure. It's not going to be because Sister Park is the prettiest girl in the world. Of course, I think she is, but 
<laughs> oh, that's, a, that's some points right there. <laughs> it's not going to be because Brother Garrett back there is the strongest guy in the world. It's going to come from all directions, all directions, all directions. Say all directions with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about a God who can heal broken marriages. He can heal the diseased bodies. Come on, are you feeling it? Come on. He can bless your finances. He can save your children. He can deliver you from addictions. He can bless you on your job. He can help you pay your bills. He, when, he's, when his blessings flow, they flow from all directions. He said, whatsoever you bind in earth shall be bound in heaven. He asked. He said, ask, and it shall be. He said, ask, and ye shall. We must, we just need for God to breathe on us. 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 Breathe on us, Jesus. Breathe on us. Come on. Breathe on me, Jesus. Breathe on me, Jesus. Breathe on me, Jesus. Oh, I need you, Lord. I got to have you, Lord. I need the breath of God in my life. We need the breath of God in our life. We just need for the Holy Ghost to move on us. We need God to move on us, to move inside of us, and to deliver us, and to help us. Acts 2, 1, 14. Coming to the end here. This is it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were in one place. Suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So I, so I prophesied, verse 10, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. The, these bones that were dead, they're alive. Uh, and and they, they stood up on their own feet, an exceeding great army. You can't work for God laying down. It's time to get up and be counted by the Lord. It's time for the church of the living God to get into formation, fall into the ranks and rise to the occasion that he has set before us here in 2023. He has set this before us. We need to rise, and we need to be counted, and we need to get in line and begin to work for God like an exceeding great army, not a wishy-washy, always looking for the easy way out kind of church. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now it's silent again. <laughs> With no spiritual backbone. we got to have a backbone. Jesus Christ is our backbone. Jesus Christ is going to be our backbone. We need holy tenacity. Holy tenacity. There's not, and we got to know how to pray. And we need to know how to touch the hem of his garment. We need to get a hold of Jesus. We are called to be an exceeding great church. We should be a church like the world has never seen before. We should be a church where the services are exciting and life-changing for anyone who walks through the doors. We should be that church when someone visits this church, they should have an experience with the Lord that they will never forget. That they will never forget. We should be a church, our praise and our worship that goes up in the sanctuary should be genuine. Why? Because this is real. Because <laughs> this is real. This is real. This is real. This is real. You really can be touched by God. You can really be healed by God. You can really be delivered by God. God can really touch your finances. God can do something spectacular in your life that has never been done before. It's real. It is real. The Holy Ghost is real. The church is real. This is a genuine thing we're doing here. Because our God is holy. It's not man-made, but it's God-ordained. It isn't time we let God be 
Emma, excuse me. Isn't it time we let God be in control of us? And not only the service, but our entire life. Our entire life. Every aspect of us. We need to yield to the Lord. We need to give up and let God do what God wants to do inside of us. We need to be that person, be the man or woman, that God can use in a very holy, apostolic way here in the 21st century. God said, I need a few good men. I need a few good women who are willing to submit to me and resist the devil, resist the world, resist their flesh, submit themselves. And we got a promise that the devil will run like a little chicken. He'll flee. He'll run. Amen. You want to know why he's not already running? Because he knows that we're the chicken. He knows there's no backbone inside of us. He knows that we don't really have the power. But if we ever get an idea and understanding of what we have, this church will experience revival like it's never experienced it before. And we're going to see the miracles that are written in Scripture. We're going to live these, these miracles and signs and these wonders. I believe it wholeheartedly that God wants to do something spectacular in your life. This altar is going to open up right now. If you need a touch of God, come down here and get it. Don't go home without getting what you, des- what you need from the Lord today. God wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to move inside of your life, but you have to give him access. You have to give him the ability to work inside of you. Amen. When you come up here, make sure you put your antennas up. In Jesus' name, amen.